Welcome to the second video of this how-to series on the iPad. In the last video, I showed you how to print envelopes using Apple's Pages, Google Docs, or Microsoft Word. And I'll put a link to that video at the top right now where you can see it. In this video, we're gonna talk about screenshots. And we're gonna to talk to you about the three different ways you can take a screenshot, how you can annotate it, and how you can save it either as an image file or as a PDF. If you find this video useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing as well. At the end of this video, there'll be some information about my Patreon page if you wanna provide even more support. So there are three ways to take a screenshot on the iPads and that's entirely dependent on what accessories you have or are willing to use or if you don't have any accessories at all. And if you're the latter, we're gonna start with that one. So this is if you've just got the iPad in your hands and nothing else. So, if we have an iPad Pro, then what you can do is you can press the power button and the volume up button at the same time. The screenshot then appears in the bottom left corner. You can tap on it and then you can begin editing, which I'll show you how to do in just a couple of minutes. If you have a non-pro iPad, so you have a touch ID button at the front, then what you'll do is you'll press the power button and the touch ID button at the same time to take that screenshot. The second method of taking a screenshot is if you have the Apple Pencil. And what you'll do to take that screenshot is you will point it and touch the bezel at the bottom right edge of the screen. I'll show you with my mouse. So what you're gonna do is with the pencil touching the bezel, you're gonna swipe inwards towards the middle. I'm just doing the mouse movement to show you what that would look like. So I'm gonna put my Apple Pencil on the bottom right corner of the iPad on the bezel then I'm gonna swipe inwards or draw inwards. And there you go. There I have my screenshot, which I can now edit. The last method of taking a screenshot is if you have a keyboard connected. That could be a smart keyboard, the magic keyboard, or just a Bluetooth keyboard you have connected to the iPad. And to use the keyboard, you need to use the keyboard shortcut, which is Command, Shift, and Four. When you press those three keys together, the screenshot will be taken and then you can edit it from there. So now that I have this screenshot here, if we have a look at the top, we can see screen or full page. At the moment it's selected to screen. So that's just taken a screenshot of what was on the screen at the time. If I want to show the full page to so everything that's below this current selection, I can click or tap on full page and then you can see that has taken a copy of the full page of the website that I was viewing. And this works in other things like uh, emails as well. So I'm gonna keep it as full page. Now, when you select full page, what it'll actually do is it will save it as a PDF instead of an image. Next up, we have a slider. And what this does is changes the brightness of the image. The next option is to delete the screenshot entirely if we decide we don't want to use this. If we move our eyes all the way to the left corner of the screen, we can see crop, which allows us to change how much of the screenshot is actually taken. And now I've clicked crop, I can drag these handles in and change the selection accordingly. If you decide you don't want to keep your crop, you can just hit reset in the top right corner. Now let's talk about annotation. So in the bottom right corner of my screen, you can see a circle with a pen inside. This contains all of our pen and pencil tools. Now you don't need an Apple pencil for this at all. You can just use your finger to draw on the screen. But for this demonstration, I am going to use the Apple pencil. So we have a number of different tools available at the bottom. If I tap on the first one, which is already selected, which is my pen, you can see it says 97 there. That's the opacity, how see-through it is. So if I drag this slider to the left and then I draw, you can see that it's actually partially see-through my annotation. If I click on that pencil again and drag it all the way to the end, now when I draw, it's much darker. And you can't actually see through what I've drawn. The other option you have for each writing implement is how thick you want the pen to be. There are five different options here.
and it's the same for the rest of the pen. So the next one we have is a highlighter. We have a pencil. And then lastly, we have our eraser. So I'm just going to draw, and I've just been defacing my entire YouTube channel here, but I'm just going to delete the drawings I've got. At the end here, we have a ruler, which is really useful if you want to draw straight lines when we're annotating something. You use two fingers on the ruler to change its position and its angle. And then if I take a pen and draw along it, it will give me a straight line. If I want to change the color of a pen or a pencil, I have this color palette here. There's a few preset selections. Or the sixth one is a palette of different colors. I can tap on that and pick from a much larger selection. The plus sign gives me a few extra tools. So the first one is text. So I can put a text box in. If you have any signatures saved on your iPad, you can tap signature and it will um, allow you to import your existing signature onto the document. We also have a magnifier, which makes larger a selection of the document. You can see it's a round circle here. And you can also see that there is a blue and a green dot attached. If I um, drag the blue dot out, it expands the size of the magnifier. And if I do the green one, it changes the magnification and you just slide it around the circle to change how big you want the text to be. So if you've made a mistake and you want to go back, you can use the undo and redo buttons, which are found at the end of this drawing palette. Back on this plus menu, we also have some preset shapes. So we have a square circle, a speech bubble and an arrow. And under these three dots, we have a setting for this drawing palette, which is auto minimize, which is if I move my mouse or my finger away from the palette, it automatically shrinks and hides itself. So I have to put my mouse over it again to get it back. And now I'm going to show you this tool here, which is a selection tool. Now I've actually got something on my screen. I can make use of that. So what this is for is if you've got any annotations you've drawn on and you want to select them, maybe to move them around, you can simply draw around your annotation. And from there, you can move it to a different part of the screen. So that's an overview of how you use the annotation tools when you've taken a screenshot. So now I've got my completed screenshot that's annotated. What I can do is go to the top left corner of the screen and choose done. This will allow me to save the PDF to files or to delete the screenshot. Alternatively, I can share it. And if I go to the right corner of the screen, I have a share menu. From here, I can send it directly to a number of different apps or I can print it. I can import it to other applications or open it in things such as GoodNotes. So that's the end of this video on how to take screenshots, annotate them, save, export, and to share them. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, and subscribe, and please consider checking out my Patreon. My Patreon's just recently launched, and it contains three different membership tiers, giving you all sorts of different things like early access to videos, exclusive content, downloadable templates, and more. You'll find the link in the description below. That's it for today. I will be back soon with another tutorial.